as an academic chaplain with responsibilities both in college and both to the chapel, are there practices that sustain you? I discovered fairly early on in my chaplaincy that I needed to take regular retreats. Um, Oxford life can be so hugely intense, um, particularly when, the, when, when you've got a sort of public face so much of the time. Um, and um, so I discovered the joys of retreats. I mean, I've been on retreats before, but um, I, so I now go to uh, uh, normally Franciscan houses um, three times a year. On one occasion, I take students, um, which is actually great fun. You could say it slightly defeats the object, <laughs> um, but at least, you know, we're, we're all together in a sort of holy place and it's, it's wonderful. Um, uh, so I tend to go to the Anglican Franciscan Mother House in Dorset, um, which is wonderful. Great long muddy walks mm. and uh, a beautiful sort of rhythm of prayer, mm. um, which is great. Through, um, through the Franciscans, I discovered that actually that was a really good framework for my own spirituality. Um, and so uh, fairly recently I've become a, um, I've taken vows as a tertiary of the uh, Society of St. Francis. Um, okay, so tell us what that is. What's a tertiary of the so, society? Um, so St. Francis, uh, obviously he sort of set up the first order uh, kind of by accident, as it were. Lots of people wanted to follow him. Um, so he got lots of um, brothers uh, and then um, he formed a community. Um, and uh, then St. Clair came along. Um, she, she loved <coughs> St. Francis and what he stood for. Uh, but back in um, Back in those days in, um, in Italy, of course, it wasn't done for women to be wandering around like that um, with blokes. Um, and so, uh, so they set up a sort of enclosed order um, of, for St. Clair. Um, so that was the second order. Um, and then uh, St. Francis was so popular um, that he himself um, actually found himself setting up the third order. Um, so it's amazing it goes back that far um, because he came across so many people from ordinary walks of life um, who thought that his message, which is very Christ-centred, um, uh, but also about uh, sort of love, justice, simplicity, um, poverty um, and uh, joy uh, and creation. Um, they were so attracted by, by all of that um, that they wanted to follow him, but he wanted them to continue to uphold their obligations and commitments in their sort of regular home lives. Um, so, uh, so he encouraged them to set up a, a sort of remote order, as it were. Mm. Uh, so they carried on in their regular lives, but they, um, they sort of held to something of St. Francis in all they did in their own particular ways. Um, so this third order um, continues to go strong. Um, and, uh, and it's thriving throughout the Church of England, um, uh, particularly in the Oxford area. Um, and uh, so I've taken some vows, very simple, and I renew them every year. Um, so, you know, therefore I look through what's realistic and feasible and what might be good for me and keeping a sort of structured prayer life. Um, so, you know, just a few simple commitments mm. about praying every day, about receiving the Eucharist, um, and about reflecting on Franciscan um, values. So, you know, it means that I'm a slightly obsessive recycler, for instance, um, because of Francis's care for creation. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, it also means that um, I value the Eucharist even more than mm. I did before. Mm. Things like that. M Megan, the Franciscan retreats are, are fascinating. Uh, I wonder if you just say a little bit more about uh, their value to mm. you, why you find yourself compelled to go on retreat and what the experience of retreat is like and then how you feel returning from a retreat. Mm. Um, retreats can be done in a huge number of different ways. I, I particularly love going to Franciscan houses, partly because they're familiar, mm. so I don't need to sort of worry about settling in. I know something of the routine and, uh, you know, how the prayers will go, so on and so forth. Um, but also they're very down to earth um, and it's all about simplicity. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's so ascetic that, you know, the beds are hard, you know, <laughs> there's only cold water. Um, there's, there's excellent food, superb hospitality, um, but it's not, you know, you don't go there for the lap of luxury. Um, so there's something 
like a spiritual sorbet about it, mm. um, quite cleansing. Mm -hmm. um, it's about taking time out for God um, and also about letting, letting your life be rebalanced, um, as it were. Gazing on um, the San Damiano crucifix, for instance, in a chapel, um, isn't necessarily so much about me gazing on Christ, it's about letting Christ gaze on me. Um, and that in itself um, is a wonderful thing to which, you know, I know I need to return um, time after time and, and make, make the opportunity for that. Sometimes, of course, prayer does get far too squeezed out of my daily life. Um, but knowing that come the end of term, um, actually I've already booked some days away where I'm committed mm -hmm. to a bit of time out um, is massively important. Um, for me, there's also something deeply grounding about the kind of joy uh, of Franciscanism um, and uh, the you know donning my wellies and uh, and going for going for walks where I'm just entirely myself and trying to sort of be aware of my at oneness with mm. creation um, and my tiny place in it, uh, you know, um, thinking about the world helps us to get a much better perspective on, um, on ourselves and our relationship with God, um, which can only be life-giving.